to know where are they? How can I find them? Here are one of the ways that you can do this. Follow my journey as I went from zero to fully booked. And one of the ways you can do that is through Palfish Moments. Palfish give you all the marketing tools that you need to find students and be a successful teacher here on Palfish. Ask questions, find training, and learn as much as you can. If you'd like to follow me, I will be showing you some of the steps that I took to go from zero to fully booked. One of the ways was through Palfish Moments. What is a good moment and what is not a good moment? And what are the best ways and times and places to post these? Here is a replay of today's discussion, Tuesday Talk About, on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you have a question, you can leave a question on my website, teacherchristy.com forward slash submit. You can submit a question anonymously, or you can choose to log into my website as a free member and leave your name should you wish to. Let's dive in and talk about moments. How was your morning? Have you finished teaching? Are you ready to nap? <laughs> How many classes did you have today? Hi, Alba. Hi, Jaden. Hi, Nisi. Hi, the wardrobe therapist, Nessie. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Britt, Bowen Britt. Thank you, Teacher Carrie. Hi. So we are talking all about Palfish. Palfish is an online teaching company. But they give you amazing opportunities to market yourself for free. So it's not just a teaching platform. Oh, let's move this. Oh, it's buffering. It's also a way to market yourself for free. So we've already discussed in the last few Tuesday talkabouts that we can do free talk to find new students. We can do the reading app to find new students, and we can do live stream classes. Everyone is so nervous for their first, and that's okay, I was too. But many of you who have been joining the training in the past few weeks have been brave, and you are doing your live stream classes, which is amazing. Many of you who are doing these even more regularly, such as daily, are having their bookings skyrocket and that is so amazing. I'm glad that I've shared with you what I've learned along the way. Many teachers helped me in the beginning so I am here to pass along what I've learned so that you can be successful and fill your schedule as well just like me. So when you start with Palfish you get your trials for the first few days. They help you out. They give you a way to try out and test that you are comfortable with the the way the app works, and then you need to do some work. So this is where we are learning together on how to do the work. Hi, Jake. Thanks for joining us. So let's talk about moments today. Moments are one of the ways that you can make yourself visible to students. But what is a moment? What is a good moment? What is not so good a moment? So we're going to discuss those. And just to let you know, you can either leave a question here on Instagram. This is on here for 24 hours. Or if you're watching the replay on YouTube, you can type a message in the chat box. Yes? Okay. If you're watching the replay, you can type a message in the chat box and I have a new feature on my website, teacherchristy.com. And then what is it? So sick. <laughs> teacherchristy.com submit. You can submit a question anytime you think of it. <laughs> and I can answer either on the website directly or since we're on today, we can answer our questions here today. So I'm very excited to test that out. And I did get some questions ahead of time, which was great. So we will address those as well. So thank you everyone for joining me today. Mr. Potato Head says, no! <laughs> Who has a Mr. Potato Head in their classroom? He is so funny. Oop. I think his ear is backwards. 
Oh, they're all backwards. <laughs> okay, so moments are a way that you can market yourself on Palfish. It is free, but there are good moments and there are some that are not so good. So what would be a good moment? Type in the chat. What do you think? Ah, yes, the favorite reward. What do you think constitutes a good moment? Is it something that is kid-friendly? Is it something that is, it has a lot of words? Or is it something that's fun and bright? So tell me in the chat box, what do you think is a good moment? Or what have you had success with, with a good moment? I have some to share today. So I've got my notes here so I remember. I want to make sure we talk about everything. And let's have a look at some good moments. So of course, we are trying to attract students, more so for the official classes. So what you want to do is when you're posting a moment, it needs to be suited to the audience you want to attract. Just like the live stream classes, you would need to be doing these to attract the audience that you want. So if you want adult free talk students, of course you would be posting something totally different than what you would be posting for the official kids course. Yes, Bella, great. Visually intriguing for kids and parents to look at. Shows a peek at who you are. Excellent wording, thank you. Let me just rearrange here. Yes, fantastic wording, thank you. So it needs to be eye-catching. If you think about, if you're reading a newspaper, hi, Teacher Corny, thank you so much for joining us. Happy to have you. And I've had success with Spot the Difference. Oh, excellent. That is great. These are great ideas. That's wonderful. Okay, that's great. Awesome. Thank you for your ideas. So that's great. If you were looking at a newspaper and there were... A lot of ads that were very similar, but then you saw one that was different and it really stood out and it was colorful and it was fun. Your eyes are going to be drawn to that one. So that's what we want to do. We want to do something bright, eye-catching, but think about also the students don't know a lot of English yet, the ones that we want to attract. So we may need to do something less wordy. So if you were to post a picture, let's say I post this as a moment. This is just an example. Of course, I wouldn't be posting this for, <laughs> for students. But if I post something like this, it's just words. I'm going to post a picture with words on it. Tell me what you think. What is good about this and what is not good about posting a picture with words on it? Tell me what you think. Hmm. It's, it's colourful. It's eye-catching because there is a difference in colours. But what can the students not do? They cannot press on it and translate it. So if you think, if you had a hundred moments to choose from and a lot of them had a picture with words on it, and sure, you can screenshot it and you can run it through a translator, but are you going to take the time to do that? If you have five or ten minutes to spend somewhere, are you going to take the time? So in the Palfish app, let me log in over here, when you receive a message in Chinese, you can click and hold and press translate. The students can do the same, but they can't translate a picture that has words on it. They can translate written words. So that's one of my tips that I like to share. So let's see if I have a message here in Chinese to show you how I can, here's one, how I can translate. So if you don't know how to do that, let's go here. I have a student who likes to send me pictures of what she does. Uh, so let's see, she sent me pictures of her doing her homework. All right, so here we go. So there's no pictures of her face here. So let's see. We have some words here in Chinese. You can click and hold and press the translate button. 
and then it will show you okay so this is when the mum was talking to me about when coronavirus started so you click and hold and you can untranslate so you can close the box click and hold translate oh uh oh i copied it so you can copy if you need to you could copy it to a translator so i've pressed translate so this will tell us so the students can do the same for a moment if you choose to write in chinese for your picture uh, the students can you know maybe that that will catch their eye a bit faster but if you think about it if i don't speak chinese i don't read chinese i can use a translator but if you translate something make sure you do it both ways so write your text in english put it in a translator and then translate it back again just to check um, it's not recommended it, it's not necessary if you can speak chinese and write chinese that's great go ahead and do that i did find that i think i did have a little bit more engagement when there were chinese letters um, characters but other times there weren't so I think it really depends on if the translator is correct it's not always 100% so that could be something to look at so p posting a moment with a picture with words even if it's really nice and it's a picture of a cute cat and it says have a have a lovely day they can't translate it so that is one of my tips so we want to do something eye-catching and bright with words in the text that can be translated. So let's have a look at the different ways you can do a moment. So let's have a look. When you go to your home screen, I've come straight from classes, so I haven't done my reports yet. Oh, a top tip for today being the last day of the month. If you want to be paid for today's classes in this pay period, you need to make sure you complete your reports before midnight Beijing time. So for me, that's in an hour and a half. So make sure you do that. And take a screenshot of your points if you wanted to keep a look, keep a track of those for each month because everything resets at midnight and the score of points that you've reached for the end of this month will determine your pay for next month. But everybody resets to zero at midnight and you start a game, a race with yourself on the first of every month. So you're not competing with other people for your pay raise. You can choose to give yourself a pay rise every month or whenever you want to, dependent on how many classes you do. Yes, Isabella, the points do go in this period whether you've completed your reports or not. So say you, you were running late and you missed your last report, but it's still within 12 hours, so you're not going to receive a fine, but you won't get paid for that one until the following month. But the points actually go on your account as soon as you've finished the class, maybe a few minutes after, and they are added to this month. But your pay for the class, if you look in your wallet that keeps a track of your points and your classes, they only appear in your wallet after you've completed the report. So I hope that is helpful. We can do another one another day about the whole point system. You're welcome, Bella. So let's have a look at our home page. We're going to go to the moments section. And we now there's two ways to look at moments. This is your moments that you've posted. You can go in and have a look at something from the previous and to add a new one. You, this is like a pencil or a crayon. You click on this and it gives you three options, pictures, video, and audio. So another tip, have a think about it. If you were looking at a newspaper or a TV ad and it was the same every single time, would you stop looking at it? Would you skip past it? Think about variety. If you, I think I mentioned in another video, if you do the same thing every time, it's like eating cold porridge for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Don't serve cold porridge, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Have some variety. Pizza. Mm, ice cream. <gasps> Fruit Loops. Who doesn't love Fruit Loops? <laughs> Type what you like the best. Hmm, Fruit Loops, ice cream, or pizza? 
Oh, I love all of them. So we want to make sure we have variety because these post to your feed, your wall, and students can look at those. But if it's the same, if you read 20 books in a row from the reading app, that will post to your moments 20 books. So it might look a little bit monotonous and boring. Like the books are great, but you want to mix it up. So have variety. So when someone scrolls through your moments section, it's different. Each one is, is different. So that's my tip. So there are also, this is the public moments. I hope you can see public moments. So if we click on that, now, what are we up to these days? So in recent times, they've given you two at a time. So you can look at two. This is in the public moments section. And then it says refresh to get new content, tap to refresh. Or you can just pull down from the top. So that's going to give me two new ones. There we go, two new ones. So this is the public moments page. But you can also add your own moments from here. It still has the pencil or the crayon up the top there. It's exactly the same. You can post from either. Now say you choose the first option which says picture and text, but you want to post a video. Can you find it? No, you can't. You need to decide before you choose that if you want to post a video you must choose a video moment. So you must choose video or it doesn't look for videos on your device. It will grab from whatever's in your device. So I use my phone, Android phone, and my iPad. So if I want to post, I switch between the two. Both uh, devices have different capabilities I've noticed. So if you want to post from here, you need to make sure it's on the device that you're teaching from. So when you, okay, so here's another tip. Sorry, I'm jumping around a bit while I think of it. If you're in the moments, the public moments section, you can see other teachers' moments, yes, but guess what else you can see? Student homework videos. At the end of each unit, there are 10 classes in a unit, and you the student has the option, they don't have to, but they have the option of posting a video for their homework at the end of their unit. So I can just see there's two that have popped up here, two students, and you'll know because it has Chinese writing and you usually see the words level, unit, lesson. Okay, so here's an example here. Let's go for this one. Okay, so what have we got here, level? K, Unit 4, Lesson 10. So this is another way to find students is on the public moments when they post their homework videos. And the best thing about that is you know that they are actually taking classes. Whereas if you're following students on the reading app, they may not yet be taking classes, in which case if they only have the reading app, they won't see your moments. You can't post moments. They don't uh, migrate over to the reading app. So the students would need to see it uh, on the, the student app. I don't think it's on the kids app either. I just found out today. So that is something to keep a track of there. So find students in the public section with their homework book. You can like the post. You can follow the student. You can give them a public comment of commendation. I like to write something specific after I've watched the video. And this uh, shows the parents of the student that you actually watched it and not just gave it a thumbs up. And I've actually got a few students from that, from that um, exercise doing that. So obviously those will probably be posting in um, daylight Beijing hours or after classes. So that's another question that quite a few people had. I will go back and read the questions at the end. Another question people had was, when do you post moments? Well, if you think about how many people are on Palfish and you post one at midnight Beijing time when all the kids are asleep or some parents are awake and then the students wake up at seven in the morning. Can you imagine how many moments have been posted in there? If everyone's posting through the day in America, 
it's my daytime, but the kids are asleep, they're not going to see it. So the best time to be noticed is in peak times. So Beijing time, 7 to 9, these are the best times to post. And on the weekend, 9 till 9 is, is a good time to post. So these are peak times as well. So that is helpful there. Now, I have found the most success with video moments. Now, does that mean you need to do a five-minute book reading and post that on your moments? That's not what I mean. And you're welcome to go back through my moments. It might take a while, though, because I have quite a few. Okay, I'm up to 502 moments <laughs> as, of, as of today. So what you can do... Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. What you can do... So if we go into the moments, and what I used to do at the end, here we go, it's loading, at the end of every teaching block, I do my reports, and while I was still in my teaching outfit, I would record some short video moments, or even take some pictures if I wanted to show, like I have my little farm animals, um, I have my little food erasers. If you go right back to the beginning, I think I have quite a few talking about food um, and I used my little erasers. Do you like ice cream? So I keep the video moments really short, a minute or less. I think a couple went over. But the reason I do that is because some people don't have very good internet and if it takes too long for the video to load, they're going to lose interest and they're not going to wait. You know, in this day and age, everyone's like, quick, I need it now. I'm in a hurry. So that's something to keep in mind. If you do want to do a video moment, make it short and sweet. The other thing that I like about video moments is that you can see how many people have viewed it. Similar to social media, when you post a video, it'll tell you how many people have looked at it. So I like that because then I get a little bit of an idea. Um, if that one has done well. So when I celebrated 750 hours, it would tell me um, that only 17 people watched it, <laughs> and that's okay. So 17 people watched the video, but 36 people gave it a thumbs up. So what does that tell you? 36 people went, oh, I like that picture, click, but only 17 people watched it, and that's fine. So sometimes, you might not get a lot of engagement on a post, on a moment, uh, and other times you will. So I did find that it was helpful to change things up. So I would do, um, when I do a picture moment, I now you're given up to nine pictures for a picture moment. So I actually try to use all nine, because you have a look at that, how small it is, right? So if you just have, okay, so this one, this one here. So this is an example of if someone's scrolling on their phone, some of the students are on an iPad, so yes, it will look a little bit bigger. If I just have one picture, and it's, that one's colorful, it's a map, but it's only one picture. So what I try to do is make it really colorful. Where's another example? So when you, when people are scrolling, they pretty much stop on this screen, they don't always have time to click in and open the moment. So that's another tip too. But if you do click in on it, it will open up further. And then you could click on a picture if you wanted to look at it separately. Okay. Oh, and just another tip too. Anyone can download your pictures. Did you know that? See, there's a save button or a share button. Sometimes if I see something in Chinese, I will keep it in case I wanted to show it to a student in class. So just to let you know, it's it's public to anyone. Once you've posted it on Palfish, it's available for anybody to download and keep. Just a word of warning there. So this one, I did actually put some Chinese writing and um, English as well. Keep healthy, wash your hands. Now, I did get 38 likes for it, and it looks like a new student that I don't know uh, liked it and sent me a message. <laughs> so sometimes you will find new students that way. 
And another way some people use moments is if you have a last minute availability that's outside of 24 hours, a student can still book if it's outside of 24 hours. If it's a free talk student, they can book a class within 12 hours. So some people also use this as a way to let free talk students know that they're available for free talk. So one thing that I do not recommend, I do not recommend posting, hey, I have 50 classes available for new, for new teachers, the best way to reach students is to do a video moment. This, if you say, I have all these classes available, come and book a class, they still don't know you, they don't know your teaching style, they want to know why do I want to book a class with you. So you need to use the other avenues to make yourself known to students rather than just say, hey, I'm available, book a class with me. They don't yet know why. So focus on short video moments and live stream classes when you're new. So I like to mix it up. I have uh, book readings. Sometimes if a student has a book as a homework, uh, video, uh, as a homework assignment, I will read the book too. I think in the higher levels on the older slides, they have books to read as an assignment. So I will read that and send it to them and I will listen to their book too. Okay, so let's have a look at a different one that I wanted to show you. Okay, so we have audio, video, picture, and reading books. So these are the ones that are going to come up on your, on your moments wall. So here's another one that I did. I did an audio. Okay, when it was cooler, I used to love wearing my hoodie, and I would teach some of the students the word hoodie. So I actually, when you have an audio moment, you can add pictures and text along with your audio. So I would use it as a way to help students and even adults, if they're driving in the car, they can listen and they can practice pronunciation. So I would use this as like a repetitive way to help them hear some words a few times in a row to practice. So I actually wrote like a transcript of what I said in my audio moment to help the students learn a new word. Now here is another tip I want to show you. Okay, so whether you're on an Android or an Apple, okay, this is one of my secret tips, okay? All right, so when you post a picture, say you take a screenshot from your phone and it's uh, portrait okay it's long and then you add it in as a moment it actually squashes the picture unless you go in and open the picture so that's two clicks people have to do let's go back here so say you're looking oh that's interesting to know when there's an audio moment you don't see the pictures until you go into it so that's a tip too so say for example this one they have to click to open the moment and then they have to click to open the picture. Now these two look a little bit squashed because they're not square. So if you have a little um, collage app on your phone or tablet, make your pictures into a square and then they look a lot better. So this one is not, see how it's more portrait? Um, so you would need to actually click into it to to see it correctly. Sometimes people will post a celebration moment of their hours. You can't see the hours. You'll just see the middle of the long um, picture that they post. Um, so some people might not realize. Let's have a look and see if we can see one. Okay, so here's an example. Very cute and I won't show who it is, but good night, sweet dreams. To us, that's a really cute picture. But for someone who doesn't yet know English, they can't read the words and they can't translate it. They could run it through a translator app, but uh, they may not have time to do that. So I'm trying to find one that might be an example of one that is a little bit squashed. Okay, well, you'll get the idea. When you're scrolling through, you'll see ones that are a little bit difficult to, um, to see because they're a little bit squashed. Uh, all right, so for example, oh, here we go. All right, I hope teacher doesn't mind using this one. 
Okay, so this one is quite squashed. It's like really squashed. So you wouldn't know, see how we can't even see their face on their profile picture if you take a picture of yourself and it cuts off the numbers on the side. So have a look. If you post a moment and you find there's something on there you want to change, you can edit your moment. Okay, so let's go into my moments. So a couple of days ago I posted something and I wanted to go back in and change something. So here's an example. Look at this one, right? So let's click into my latest moment. If you want to go to my profile, you can have a look. This is my latest moment. I used nine pictures. I was celebrating 800 hours. But look at this ABC alphabet picture. You can't see all the letters. Why is that? Because it's a landscape picture. So um, it's still there, but people would have to click into it to see it. So I was going to show you how you can edit. So click into your post and at the top you'll see three dots and click on that and it tells you you can share it with students. If you want to share it in your student group, you can share it or with another teacher. You can edit or you can delete. So you can edit, um, you can delete pictures, you can add pictures, you can't reorder pictures but it'll put them in the order that you add them and you can edit your text. So that's something as well. Okay, I hope this is being helpful. Let me know if you've learned something new along the way. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some hearts if this is uh, helpful. I hope this is helpful. Okay, so what else did we want to talk about? Let me look at my notes. Okay, we're going to go back through and have a look at... Okay, thank you. Thanks for sticking with me, everyone. Okay, let's have a look through mixed language. I covered that one. Covered that one. I'm just looking at the, yes, you were right, Bella. They can't translate pictures. Yes, excellent Alba short videos for the kids with your voice so they can hear what you sound like. Spot the difference. That sounds really fun. Okay, any more questions? Okay, no, I think we're good at the moment. Now, if I do miss a question today, you're welcome to uh, send me a message after, or you can go to my website now, teacherchristy.com forward slash submit. You can submit a question, and then everyone else can see it's anonymous, doesn't have your name unless you want to have your name, and that will help other people as well. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay. Oh, another tip, if you want ideas on what type of short videos to do, and even if you haven't taught a lot of classes yet, you can have a look through the trials that you haven't even done and think about words that the students will be learning or the songs that are in some of the classes. I will use those as a short video moment. So if you look back through my moments, and there's one on my Instagram as well, you can I changed the words. So one of the units talks about animals and what do you see? What do you see? So anytime I'm walking, I think on New Year's Day I went for a walk and I w walked down a, a blah, blah. I walked down a boardwalk uh, near the ocean and I saw some birds flying in the sky. There were palm trees and I could see the sun. So I changed the words to they know the sound of the song and the rhythm of the song, but I replaced the nouns so it showed that you can use this song to learn other words as well. So that's an idea. I've seen other teachers and they will actually record the song and say there's one about fruit, um, there's the whole um, section about food. I like oranges, I like meat, I like salad. So you might want to do a short video moment about one of the class songs and that can be really helpful too because that shows the students what you look like in class, how you sound, your energy, whether you're quiet, whether you're outgoing and some people worry that there's so many teachers, are there any students left? Well there are, they just don't know about you yet. 
So they're looking for you. And each student finds a teacher that suits their personality. And when you do the moments and the live stream classes, it's not just students and teachers that see them. It can be people and in the office at Palfish, the sales staff and the head teachers can look at these. I've had um, head teachers enroll in some of my lives later to look at replays and I've received new classes that way from students. So it's not just for the students to see as well. Okay, so let's have another look. Okay, so we have some questions coming up on the website and then we have the top tip for how to ah she's on top of things very good that's what I was just about to cover so we've had a question come in from Bella and do you recommend posting moments in the reading app oh, I'm so excited so this is at the moment probably the most exposure that you will get on Palfish. Now when I first started the reading app was available for teachers to post moments. It does have to be verified by the office for uh, it says for up to two business days but it could be uh, submitted earlier and if they pass it it will be public for all kids to see. So when you're in the reading app so let's go, we, we talked about the reading app last week. You can go back and watch the replay. I'll put a link, I think it's up here. <laughs> you can have a look at the previous video. So let's open up the reading app. Oh look, I got some shells. <laughs> so on the front page, yes, it's all in Chinese, but all you need to know is this is where you read books and then go down to the playground. It's like a carousel down the bottom here. The carousel is where the students in the reading app can post their moments. They'll do video or for the coronavirus, they were all doing amazing pictures to say, you know, um, oh, can I say it? And they were putting pictures about the virus and the health professionals helping. It was really cute. So teachers can post at this time of making the video teachers can post in the reading app. Okay, now what would you want to do here? So yes, Bella, I do recommend it, absolutely. But what would you want to post here? I would not waste your time posting pictures because the students post pictures. Um, the most exposure you will get is posting a video. So sometimes when I was doing those short video moments, I would post it on my Palfish teacher app and I would post it on the reading app because it's totally separate. So the office will need to verify it. So if you, how do you know if something's been verified? So you go to your home page of the reading app, click in on your, oh, sorry, let's back up, sorry. How do you post one? <laughs> go into the carousel and just like the other moments, put this here, in the top right hand corner, Nope, that's history. Oh, that's something new. Okay, so I'm looking on a an Android phone right now, so I didn't know that. There's a history button in the top. But let's have a look. We've got a plus button. So whether you're on this one, or let's have a look. If we can look on this one as well. Let's see if it looks different. Now, you cannot log into the teacher app on two different devices, but you can on the reading app. I don't know why it's different, but let's have a look. Okay, so we're going into, so here is the iPad home screen for the reading app. So this is an extension of the reading app live that we did last week. So we go to the carousel, click on that. Okay, and it's the same. So it has the plus button, plus button right here, excuse my lights. So we click on the plus button. This is too big to hold up. <laughs> I'll do it on the phone. Click the plus button. And it will say video or pictures and text. So these are the two options. So it looks like you don't have the audio option. It's just video and pictures. But if you think about it, if the kids, there's a lot of videos in there. If you want to find more students, go to the reading app. You don't need to read a million books with your own voice to find students. Uh, so this is a little extension to the reading app. You can go and listen to students' books 
and look at the, the these are called grow up moments. So in the reading app, that little carousel is called grow up moments. This is where you find the students. And this is where you find the students that are actually active on the app. They're, they're posting. They like to be seen. Some of them love to be on social media. It's, it's kind of like WeChat. Um, it's built into the app. So this is the reading app. Teachers currently are allowed to post here. But what do you think students are going to look at? Are they going to look at words, pictures, scroll, scroll, scroll? being brutally honest here. If I was looking at a million moments, I'm going to look at the video that looks the most interesting and colorful and fun and it's short because some of the students don't have a lot of time to be watching something that goes for five minutes. So we press the plus button video and it will choose whatever is in your device. So I'll tell you my experience with this. So when I first started, yes, it was available for teachers. For a time it was not. They sent a message, we've taken it down, the ability for teachers to post here. So a lot of the teachers were really upset, but this was really a place for the kids. And I don't know why they've changed it, but they've recently opened that up again for teachers. So it's the last day of March, 2020. You can currently post as a teacher on the Palfish Reading app a moment. So in the beginning, now I'm not fancy with editing at all, and I know some of you are, you do amazing videos. I didn't even edit and I was at a friend's house who has a fish pond outside. It's an amazing landscape. So I had someone hold the camera for me and I was over next to the pond and I can't even remember what I said, talking about the fish. I made it short, small, um, short sentences and I think I might have even said, what do you see? And then I got the camera and I put it as close as I could to the water and you could see the fish swimming. And then I asked, what color are the fish? How many fish do you see? And do you know, I don't know how many, how many people watched the video, but because it was a video, I could see how many video, how many people viewed it. So how do you know if someone has viewed it and how do you know if it was verified by Palfish? So go to your picture icon, <clears throat> excuse me, this is your your profile. These are your books that you've read, so it's got works, these are your works and then you've got grow up posts. So if you click on that, this will show you all the ones that you've added in. You can actually post from this section as well, it says there, post on grow up post on grow up now. So you can do it from there or you can do it within that grow up moment. So this will tell you, okay, so the last time I posted was when they took it down for teachers. So this actually didn't get verified, but you'll see the green. It says, what does it say? <laughs> Verify failed. So that will tell you you've posted it, Palfish has looked at it and they've said, no, that's not something we want to feature here. So don't take it personally. They must look at so many a day. So I'll show you one that did get approved. So if something did get approved, you just won't see the verify failed. So you don't get a message that says it is or it isn't. You just need to look. And if you wonder, oh, I'm getting all these new followers or new bookings, it could be from one of your posts. So this one, okay, this is a video. I'm going to click in on it to open it up. And it's going to tell me, it's really small, but you can see the number here, how many people view, how many times the video was viewed. So this one I was talking about science. I love science and insects and animals and the solar system. I keep a solar system book right here. So 104 times this video was viewed. And you might think that's fantastic. Well, let me show you the most exciting one. And like I said, I'm not very good at editing. So I would just record the videos and post them. So the opening thumbnail might look terrible. I don't know if that's why. Sometimes they got more views than others. So this one was talking about what kind of teacher do you like? A fun a fun, crazy teacher, not crazy, or a serious teacher. So this one got 448 views. And this was just me in my classroom with balloons on the background, asking them questions. And I put on funny glasses to be serious and 
that one goes for a minute 41. So there you go, 448 views. And I got quite a few students comment on those. But my highest, the highest viewed, like I said, not good at editing. What is your favorite animal? Okay, so let's click in on there. Okay. It goes for a minute 24, 800, 800 video views on this post. And I got a lot of um, talk on this one because I was talking about plurals of animals. One sheep, two sheep. And they were like, what? You don't have an S? There's a whole conversation in there. It's hilarious. So um, a lot of the students might type in Chinese and you can translate it. So if we click on it, if you click on a comment, no, I take that back. No, actually you cannot translate in there. So you may need to take a screenshot and run it through a translator. So that is the most amazing place right now that's still available to teachers that I would recommend. Short, interesting, colorful video moments on the Palfish Reading app. So I hope that has been really helpful today. I know I love to talk. It's 5 to 11. So thank you for joining me today. If you have any more questions, you can post a question on my website, teacherchristy, K-R-I-S-T-Y, dot com forward slash submit. Submit a question. You can send me a message. Have a look at the replay. You can leave um, a, a question in the comments. YouTube didn't work out today. I'm so sorry, but I'm going to post this on YouTube later for everyone to watch because it's Tuesday Talk About and everyone expects it on Tuesday. So thank you for joining me today. Do you have any questions before I go? I still have some people here. So let me know if you have any questions, but if you can't think, I understand. What else did I want to say? Let me double check my notes while you're having a think. Okay. Oh, I didn't tell you my cute story. <gasps> my cutest story. Okay, so I love insects and animals. Okay, I really like ladybugs. They're so interesting. So when I first started with Powerfish, I was doing some weekend classes and then I decided I need a break. So I was just doing through the week and I received a message on a Saturday night. I missed it. So I missed the class. A student wanted to have class with me. It was a message from a head teacher. And she said, this student wants to have class with you. He really likes you. And I'm like, how does he know he really likes me? Do you know what he really likes? He really likes ladybugs. He's four years old. I've been teaching him since May 2018. And we still talk about ladybugs to this day. He loves ladybugs. So you need to be you. When you do a moment, it has to be what you would do. What do you like so that you can share that love with other students? Don't copy someone else because then when the student says, oh, I really like what that teacher did, but that wasn't you, and then they get in your class, and who's this teacher? <laughs> so you have to be you. These are the, the ways that Palfish give us the amazing opportunity to meet new students. So we have, let's recap. And you can go back, I'll put the link up here to a playlist of the previous videos we've done on how to find new students, increase your bookings, and fill up your official classes. You can use free talk as a way to increase your hours, live stream classes, the reading app, and moments, the right kind of moment. Okay, if you have any extra questions, please let me know, and I will sign off. I hope everyone has a great day, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much. See you.